to be a very boring fight. <laughs> um, either way, I think that home wins, and I'm going to throw a bold prediction out there. I think it ends after the third round via doctor stoppage. Holly Holm. Wow. <laughs> so, Someone put money on that. That's gonna be a good bet, right? And um, well finally we have the uh the main event. It's a shame the build has been shot for this, I think, but um it still left us with plenty of entertainment. Um Don, I'll start with you, sir. Your pick for Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. I think getting into this it's hard to pick against Conor McGregor. The hype train is it's blew through every station it's came to. It's <laughs> it's 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 going. I think that I think uh, Connor wins. If I'm going to say McGregor, uh, Nate likes likes to get hot. He'll take some punches and he'll give out more punches. But I yeah. think taking punches with Connor McGregor, I think it's a bad idea. Uh, just the way he fights, he's he's first. I think it's the first person maybe since Joe Duffy that's uh, bigger than him. But I don't think that'll be a be a problem. I think McGregor's going to come out there and just basically. Wait, Nate likes to come in quite fast, and I think McGregor's going to come in there. When Nate when comes in fast, he's just going to hit him. Hit him and move, hit him and move. And it's probably going to, if if Nate gets upset and tries to keep pushing in, it's just going to be it's going to be a bad night for him. I don't think he's going to survive five rounds of, five rounds of that. So I think the McGregor's going to, they, they want to pick a, they want to, I think th- third round for McGregor. Wow, third uh, round, I like it. TKO, I go for. I don't think... Uh, Nate's going to get iced and hit the map. I think it'll be a the refs. I think I'll jump in in the third round and stop stop it after a bit of bit of damage from McGregor. And what about the physical advantages? You made a good point there. Yeah, um, usually McGregor's a lot taller than his opponents. Do you think um, with the weight cut and everything else that his power still translates well from featherweight up to way all the way up to what is this welterweight? It's obviously it's hard to see until you actually see it, but he seems sure. to be really happy every time you see him. He's eating and he's, he's enjoying being at this weight, yeah. and he, he seems to be kind of enjoying at the gym. So I th- I, th- I think it'll be it'll be good to. I'm actually looking forward to seeing him at this weight and seeing how he, how he does it, and kind of if if it is a a good weight for him to fight at. I mean, they're kind of teasing that there might be a potential, uh, you know, set up for Robbie. Uh, well, to wait, uh, yeah, I heard that. I don't know. I think obviously. I'll, all depends if he comes out, wins his fight, and looks looks good at that sure. weight. You know, yeah, that could be a UFC two hundred. I mean, that's uh, that, that's the main event right there. Yeah, if he does a, a if he does a Jose Aldo on this, yeah, you've, that's your that's your main card for two hundred, absolutely. And uh, let's move on to um, Peter. What are your thoughts um, for this uh, main event? Who are you picking? Is it Nate Diaz or is it Conor McGregor? Well, it's a bit unknown here, but just to go on that last point there, you're going on about you might fight Robbie at 200. I, I'd still think he'll fight Dos Anjos at 200. Whatever happens in this fight, even if he gets beat, I reckon he'll fight Dos Anjos at 200. And as for this one, you don't know he's stepping up two weights. Uh, I don't think Nate's in the shape that you would usually see him, but if Connor knocks him out early, it's not going to make everybody be like, well, we expected that. But I think Nate will need to get him on the ground and try his, his jiu-jitsu skills and all that down there, but I, I just I can see Connor finishing him in the first round, like you said. I just I just don't think... If, I think Nate needed a full fight camp, and he's not got that. I don't think he can be in shape. But I'm also hearing that Connor's coming in light as well. He's not going to be coming in at 170. Yeah, he's so. actually under, yeah. And he's, he's like... Um, you know, like we were saying there, he's says, uh, what was it, the, 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 the phrase is, he swapped salads for steaks, and he's, you know, yeah. like Don said, he's enjoying his training, and he's enjoying his two breakfasts every morning, and yet he's still underweight, you know, think of that, um, he's certainly not, I, I, it's not been a struggle, has it? Oh, also, after that, the fight last night at the press conference, Yeah, I, I thought, I, that looks good for Nate, but I've seen an interview today, and Nate walked out in it. He couldn't take any more Connor's trash talk. So what do you make of that? Do you think Connors, the men games have worked? Connor's in his head. Yeah, he's Connor's in his head now. After the interview I seen just before we started this podcast, wow. he walked out. It was all about money. We were asking him. Connor's about to be getting ten million, and uh, the woman goes, "We're gonna we're gonna talk about money now." And Connor goes to Nate, "You go make me a cup of coffee." There's <laughs> <laughs> no need for you to talk about money. So I just yeah, think, and you walk out. So I think he's, he's in his head now. 
He's, he's so definitely been game. repeating that. He's like, I've made, I've made you a millionaire, son. Just you yep. sit there. And yep. it was last night. It was <laughs> right. dan- yeah. dance, dance for me. For me. I, I thought, That's, <laughs> that was a bit low. <laughs> and he's, he's that till the end. You know, I remember he, uh, the interview with Chad Mendes after their fight. And, you know, you said the guy just wouldn't shut up even when I was elbowing him in the face. You know, that trash talk, can t- people think that ends when the, you know, the bell starts. But McGregor, it's not the case. He just can't, he can't, he can't stop himself. And that's obviously part of what? his game. And, you know, like you said, Peter, it's, it's obviously beginning to take its toll now on, on Nate Diaz. And that's only after, what, a week and a half, maybe, um, of a build. Well, finally, Kevin, I'll come to you for your, th- uh, your thoughts. Uh, first of all, on the Desanos pullout and uh, the build for this fight. And finally, your prediction, sir. Well, you know, John, the Dos Anjos pulling out is, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's a tragedy in my eyes, man. I was so psyched up to see the fight. I'm still very excited to see this one, but I was really interested to see, you know, Dos Anjos get in there and put his style of fighting on Conor McGregor. He's a little more patient than some, and he's got that killer instinct, you know, so I think it's, it's obviously a legitimate injury. You know, a lot of times guys will say, you know, you see these guys on Twitter and they say, oh, he's scared. And this guy's pulling out of the fight because he's scared. At this level, none of these guys are scared. And especially at the top ten and the champion, he's not scared of any man walking around. You you ask this guy if he could beat up the heavyweight champ, he's going to tell you that he could, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think think it's a fight that we will see eventually. And I think it's, you know, it's sad that we didn't didn't get to see it this go around at 196, but what better replacement than Nate Diaz, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know. I think that Connor's definitely bothering him, but the calmness that both of the Diaz brothers have whenever they get into the uh, to the cage, you know, they they come to scrap, they come to fight, and while, you know, they, they might look frustrated at times, that calmness never really goes away, I don't think. Uh, you know, he has a tremendous chin. We know he has tremendous stamina. The, the conditioning's there. You know, the, the tools are there. I don't think we've seen Conor McGregor fight a guy with the style of stand-up that Nate brings to the table. I think that'll be a, tell a lot about it. But again, you know, I can see it just going as one of the other commenters uh, said, uh, or one of the other commentators said, you know, about, uh, about him picking him off, you know, picking his shots, moving around, and I think that could really frustrate Nate Diaz. Now, I've said it before on one of these podcasts when we were talking about his brother, yeah. They have extremely underrated jiu-jitsu skills because we never get to see them. Uh, you know, I think there's this a no-brainer to go into this fight looking for the takedown immediately. You do not get in there and play with this man. Mm-hmm. The notorious one, that's what, I mean, that's what he wants you to do. He wants to stand and bang with you. So, so why, why do that? We saw Mendez have some success in the first round of his mm-hmm. fight with Connor, where he got him down, and I think that's going to be the key to success for Diaz. And I'm going to be bold. I'm going to play the bad guy here. I'm picking <laughs> Diaz, and I'm going to pick him by submission. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not sure which round it's going to happen in. I'm thinking about midway through. You know, obviously, I could definitely be totally wrong. Conor McGregor's a 5-1 to favorite going into this deal. <laughs> the, uh, the money doesn't lie. The smart yeah. money is, uh, you know, on Conor. I wouldn't yeah. bet it at 5-1, to one, but if it was 3, you know, 3-1, to one, I'd definitely have to consider it. But getting Diaz going in here, and you know, again, it cannot be overstated enough. Connor is moving up 25 pounds in weight yeah. to go up here. He's never competed at 170. We don't know, you know, how that's going to affect him, whether it be beneficial. You know, common uh, common logic would say it's going to be beneficial because the guy's not having to cut weight to get in there. But how's he going to deal with the bigger man, the longer man? You know, all all the all the telltale signs of an upset are here. I'm going to be putting a small – I'll tell you it's going to be a small bet, but I'm going to put a small little value bet on Diaz <laughs> with nothing more than just the fact to say that I told you so whenever it happens. Nice, excellent. Well played, sir. I think McGregor's his last losses were submission losses, so it's, that's bad. Yeah. Diaz 2010. Yeah. yeah, if Diaz yeah, were to win, I would submission, see that. Those submission losses came against guys that, that uh, don't have the uh, the level of jiu-jitsu that, that the Diaz has had. So mm. that's yeah, part of my thinking. I would like to see uh, Diaz actually walk out and do his usual the Stockton slap and just show show McGregor that by the way you're you're not in my head. Flip him off. Let's fight. I'd like yeah, yeah I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah, very far second. I would love to see that. I mean, that, the place the place would absolutely explode. I could probably see yeah. McGregor with a, with a smile on his face. Go, you, know, you, you want to do this? Let's do it. Well, it all goes down tomorrow. UFC one ninety six. McGregor versus Diaz. Um, we were supposed to get the Sanyos, but I think we've got something even better. 
Uh, my thanks to our panel here today, Kevin Jones of the main event on Double T 97.3. Thank you for your time, sir. Oh, John, glad to be here. Thank you, sir. Peter Knox of MMA UK, thank you very much for your time, sir. It was an honour, thank you very much. And Don Wilson, Fight Top Scotland, top man, thanks again for your time, sir. Anytime. Don't forget to check us out on Sunday on the Martial Arts Chat Podcast, where we will have all the reaction on a post-fight show. And my thank you again to our panel here today, and we'll speak to you all again on Sunday.